All right, so it's been about two weeks since I worked on Lint, and um, I'm actually kind of excited to pick up the project again. When, when I first started, it was just like to get something working, was to get data from Plaid and be able to represent that in React. Now that I've gotten past that hurdle, I kind of want to do some things to tidy up. This week is just kind of um, revitalize the way that it looks and try to make it a little bit more user-friendly to again get closer to being a clone of the actual um mint product that uh intuit puts out so i'm just going to do some brainstorming real quick and write some stuff down on some paper and um, then i'll check in with you guys here in a minute all right so after a while of thinking about it i decided i'm going to go with something like this so i'll try to show you all the best i can so i'm thinking something like this so of course the major outline is the actual web page that you will see and at the very very top there'll be like some sort of header that just has the name of the application in our case it's going to be lint uh, and then an option to add an account, log out, real simple. And then I'm thinking two smaller modals inside of that. So one of these is for accounts, and then they'll all be listed here. You can scroll down through here, and it should be an infinite scroll to all your accounts. And then uh, transactions. Um, so this will be collective of all transactions. So all transactions for the given accounts, and this will, and they'll be in the order of you know, like date, description, and amount. So, and they'll uh, populate this side. So that's what I'm gonna go for. Yeah, all right, see y'all soon. All right, so I just wanted to recap. This is what the application looked like about two weeks ago. So there's no differentiation between accounts. Um, there's no, like the, these buttons stay up here and they actually hover over everything else, which is kind of bad. Um, and then I still have this user ID displaying up here, which I don't need to have display anymore. So this is what the UI looks like currently. So, you know, based on, again, that image, um, that, that little bit of video I shared of the new redesign that I've sketched out here, hopefully it'll look a little bit better. So um, I think I'm gonna start real small just by trying to design the actual interface and then worry about getting the data into it uh, momentarily. So yeah, that's where I'm gonna get started. All right, let's go. All right, so um, I kind of have it working the way I want to. So I kind of want to have these two on separate sides, right? Um, but I've got some weird overlap issues. Like these borders are supposed to be different. Like if I change this, this one's border color. So I'll change the border color of transactions so you can really see that it's supposed to be. Uh... Yeah, so these are overlapping and they 100% should not overlap. So. I've got to fix that. I'm also going to work on the transition of the positions. And um, then I should be able to actually get the data into uh, this view again. So that should be good. All right, so I'm going to work on that. Okay, so admittedly, this isn't looking like how I've envisioned so far. Um, so I want to make some more updates, but I do have the transaction showing over here like I wanted, and I do have the accounts um, showing. Now, the reason why these accounts look weird is because, well, this is just how I'm storing it in the database right now. I'm not storing it in a nice, readable way. I'm storing it the exact way you get it back from, from Plaid. Um, so I'll have to, so I think what I'm going to do next is implement changing that. So of course this looks more readable and, um, overall making this UI look a little bit better than what I'm, than what I've got here, because right now it's, it admittedly, it's not exactly what I want. Iterate on that and I'll uh, come back in a little bit. So now I've been looking into how I can have better state management because from all that I found with React is and feel free to correct me in the comments if i'm wrong but so in react all components have a state and that state is meant to kind of live in isolation it's meant to live in that one component itself 
Now, if you want components to share like a common state, React has this methodology of what it what is declared as lifting state up, which basically says, you know, if you have all these, if you have a child, if you have like a child um, component, then if you have like different children components, then you store the state in a parent component and all the children feed off the parent state. And that's fine if the app, like if, you know, your components are truly children of your if your components are truly children of like some sort of parent component, but my structure really doesn't fit into that. So I was looking for a, a form of global state management. And so that's why I found Redux. So as far as I understand Redux and feel free to, to correct me down in the comments below, but Redux is a global state manager um, for web applications. Um, I'm going to use Redux for my central for my centralized state approach. Um, now, with Redux, I'm going to have to completely, in a in a sense, I'm going to have to completely redo all of my components, and it's because the way they're all modifying state is completely incompatible with how Redux works. So, with Redux, you have actions, reducers, and a store, and all three of those components play together to actually update state in a way that it translates to components and any actions that a user takes in your web application can be reflected and can change the state. But to do that, you really have to use this actions reducers in this, in this store idea. Um, so I'm gonna have to completely redo that. So I'm just gonna read over this and try to wrap my mind around Redux a little bit more. And then I will come back and hopefully I will have gotten my application completely integrated with Redux and all the issues with my state um, and my changes in state that I'm experiencing on, on, my, on my application so far will go away. Um, so yeah, all right, stay tuned. So I'll be using Redux and I'm not a professional Redux, so this is gonna sound so this probably isn't going to be very accurate, but with um, Redux, there's a whole lot of boilerplate that you have to set up before the actual project works the way you want it to. So I've been fighting with it for the last few hours, but I finally got it to, to work. Essentially, what it allows me to do is when you wrap your global state in React Redux, which is the React framework that connects with Redux, which is really cool to use and makes using Redux and React um, so much easier. Um, you you can have this global store state and so right here you're not going to see it um like it, it it's incorrect these fields are set but they're not but anyway if you look at the props so the user id actually gets set as a prop um and the is logged in also gets set as a prop and like i said it's not showing right here but if i i'm gonna go back and just comment out this function because it the reason why you can't see it right now is because it redirects me to another page and this page is this page is rendering a component which is not set up to to use um, the 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 user ID correctly. Um, so or use the user ID in the new way that I'm using it. So if I uncom so if I comment those lines out and we come back to the browser and I sign in, you can see that I do have the the user ID and the is logged in is true. Um, and that all got set because I have um, that all got set because I have my reducer, my login reducer changes the state. So it changes my state to have this username, this user ID, and this is logged in. And I then return that in and the action. What actually happens is is this this um this is what's triggered when somebody clicks on the login button. So uh, this this um, method is, is dispatched. The moral of the story is I now have all of the groundwork set up. So now all I have to do is create reducers for all of my um, activities that need it. And I have to create actions for all those reducers to use. Um, so yeah, so I just have to do that. And then when I do that, I should be able to get back to, to the next point of doing some other things on the front end a little bit more because the user state will be all distinguished and flushed out. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna gonna get on that. 
Redux is a very nice uh, state management tool, um, and React Redux is really nice for implementing that easily into React. However, it required a lot of boilerplate code, and it required a lot of time to just first wrap my mind around how um, Redux actually works, and then how it is going to benefit my application. So I'm actually going to show that really quickly. So if I type in some test credentials, and I sign in, you see very similar to what we saw in the past, like if I have accounts, um, they come through, and if I have transactions, they come through. Um, but the really cool thing here is if you go to the state, you can see the chart. And this is essentially the entire state for my application. So in Redux, right, you have this one state that's being used throughout the entirety of your application. Um, the next level down is essentially each one of your reducers that you make. Um, think about these reducers as you make one reducer per component. For example, when the login reducer goes through all of its functions, it then does some things to, it then runs some actions and the actions are what populate these fields that are in this state, these values of state. Uh, and you can see that over here, Redux shows you exactly what order they were called in. So if I click on init, I can actually see basically how the action tree and the state tree changed um, for each action that was taken. Um, so my login user action, if I click it, see, you see that this payload occurred. And so the type was obviously login user and this payload with the user ID in this is logged in was returned. And I can see that for every single one of these payloads and you can see exactly what changed. Like um, this is a pretty big one because it's transactions, right? Um, and so, so it's very helpful. It's a very, this is a very helpful debugging tool to use. And then you can also see what changed in um, state as something happened. So if you click like difference for each action, it shows you what changed. So in this case, user's ID became this after the login user occurred, which is what we were expecting because now that we've logged in with the user, we have a UID. And for example, when we go to get transactions, we expect that transactions now has all these additions to it, right? Which is exactly what we were expecting. Um, so with all that being said, um, Redux is a very powerful tool. It's just kind of complicated to set up. It has a lot of boilerplate, but it's definitely worth it, and I'm glad I've learned it. Uh, with that being said, I didn't get as much, I guess, done um, in the project in these couple weeks as I would like to, but it's just because I kind of had to really start over when I used Redux. Um, so if you're interested in using React Redux or just using Redux at all, whether you're going to use React or not, um, maybe looking at the code will help you. I will update the code as of this video um, and it will be it will be live and there will be a link in the description for that. So if you have any questions about it, please do let me know. I think for the next video, what I'm really gonna work on are the stylings and I'm gonna work on like live updates to the actual page. All right, so until the next one. Thanks, guys. Black or brown, uh, yeah. What you black for brown? What you rough for black? Super fast. How you bring your